trippers and welcome to our next adventure. It is currently the school holidays in Victoria uh, in September and um, at the end of these school holidays we are also lucky to, enough to have a public holiday tacked on for the grand final during um, the um, last week of the school holidays. So we've decided to get away for about a week and a half um, and uh, just have a bit of R&R &R. and we've come up to a favourite area that we love to frequent whenever we can in the warmer weather which is along the Murray River on the Victorian side and um, one thing that uh, you can do along the Murray River there are many earmarked campgrounds and they do get extremely busy as the weather gets warmer especially when it's things like school holidays Christmas Easter that sort of thing so um, what we're lucky enough to find is that you can often just drive through some of the tracks um, if you're a little bit familiar with some of the areas and you can find some fantastic little spots along the river. Um, some are on a bit of a bank and some have nice little um, areas down to beach. Uh, so we've found a spot along uh, the river up near Tokemal area and I will take you around and show you what we're currently enjoying. So this is the bush area and that's typical of what you would find coming in to the Murray. Those that haven't been here before uh, will know that it's surrounded by enormous gum trees. One advantage of being surrounded by these beautiful gum trees is that a lot of the areas along the here have koalas and um, as it's koala mating season you might be a lot lucky enough to hear them um, and I'll have a little bit of footage of one that we're lucky enough to um, be in the gum tree behind our campground on this trip that's been quite vocal on and off so that's something nice and exciting to hear so this is the beautiful Murray this is a really nice section as well. Some are quite uh, more exposed. The Murray River changes hugely um, with water levels and um, a lot of the logs and debris. It can be quite dangerous in parts um, because it's forever shifting what's underneath. Um, this is, is quite a wide section. We weren't able to get the jet ski out this trip um, but sometimes it's nice just to go along the ski. The river goes for forever. So um, it's, it's a really nice um, meander along the river on the ski or in boats. Lots of boats come out. We've only seen a few so far, not too many at the moment. So this is our area that we've set up. So you can see how lucky are we in this country that we can set up in these beautiful spaces with million dollar views for free. So when I was talking about the big gum trees, um, gum trees are notorious for dropping limbs for no reason, doesn't have to be windy, often they do fall when it's um, just still. So you do need to be super, super careful about where you pick your camping areas and um, well, oh, seems like we've just had a bit of a windstorm fly up. Um, sometimes that happens along the Murray as well, out of nowhere. <laughs> you just deal with it, make sure everything's tied down always. Pretty much every year there'll be some type of um, crazy wind that comes through. And we'll take your camp as quick a look at you um, if things aren't tied down properly. So um, back to the gum trees. Um, there have been some pretty horrific accidents that have happened in the past from tree limbs falling on campers. So be really mindful of that when you're picking your camp area. Have a look at the way that they're leaning. You can't always predict. Try and make sure that you're in a clear area and make sure that there's no big limbs overhanging your actual camp area. 
as well. Um, there are plenty of places along here that you can find that will be okay for that. That's a beautiful beach side over the other side. That's on the New South Wales side. Um, that may be in private property. A lot of the area on the New South Wales side is on private property. Um, so I'm not really sure, but lots and lots of little beaches along the Murray. Some big beaches too. So, yeah, we're fortunate that we've been, obviously, we're self-sufficient. You need to be self-sufficient along here. Some, some campgrounds um, do have drop toilets. You can find quite a lot on wiki camps as well. So just do your research to find if that's what you want and need. There are camps along here. This obviously doesn't because it's not near Mark Campground. It's just a spot along the river. Usually um, you can find lots and lots of wood as well to be able to get your fires. Unless you're in the really, really popular um, camp areas like Burke's and Bruce's Beaches and things like that. The firewood sources in those areas are usually ripped apart pretty quickly. So um, <clears throat> you might be struggling to get wood there. But these type of little spots, um, you don't have that problem. As you can hear too, there's loads of wildlife. Cockatoos, kookaburras, all sorts of birds. Um, I'm sure the uh, snakes will be around as well. Fortunately, we don't tend to see many of those when we're up here, but you do have to be mindful. Uh, so, yeah, this is us. So it's not particularly deep, but what's it like underfoot? There's clay in here, but there's rock there. Yeah, it's still firm. Yeah. There's no big holes here where you're stuck. I wonder what he did there. So we heard a car last night just over the uh, creek crossing here for quite a long time revving obviously winching getting stuck called out to some mates and we've come over to have a look and see where he might have got hooked up on and I would say this is it oh what a mess and it looks like which tree do you reckon Tony's winched off oh why would you come this bit when you could go there there's a dry track right there it was dark what do you reckon the car was Tone oh, I thought it was an F100 F100. F-150 actually, I think. Obviously thought he could. And uh, I don't see any winch marks. Oh, unless he's pulled, oh, he's pulled this tree down. Tree there and tree over there. Yeah, I reckon he's pulled this tree down trying to winch himself out. Well, that wasn't bright anyway, but what part of this was? Wow. So this is just from the other end, where he's obviously come in and he's tried that tree 
no luck. And then gone through and tried that tree. Hmm. Oh my god! Jay! Oh, are they swimming? He's, he, yes, he's in the water. <gasps> One's up the tree already, or I think. There oh. he goes. Our rooting and jump the water together. <laughs> Did they fall in as they were going? Oh.
So I thought I'd share a bit of a good news story. For those that have followed us for a while, you will know that we have been trialling the DCV airbase, which essentially is a um, lithium polymer generator, a portable one. And um, we've been trialling it for the company, Decarbon Ventures. It's about to launch um, for the kickstart program within the next couple of weeks and um, we've been using it over our um, last few months on our travels to um, help them test out and, and work out any bugs and things like that for them. Fortunately we've had it with us um, on this trip that we've been doing over the last week and a half um, and we um, after a day of being away and on the river, we discovered that our batteries, our AGM batteries in our caravan just completely died. And um, it, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things. It's a, it was a second-hand van. We bought it um, about 10 months ago and it's a 12 year old van so we don't know the history of when the last time the batteries were changed over or even if they have been changed over. We don't think the van had been used all that much and that's why we're finding now that we're using it um, quite regularly that things are just going wrong and, and needing replacing but you know as I said that's to be expected when you buy a second hand van. What is a bit of a shock is when you are actually out and um, literally on your first day of your trip and your batteries die. So um, it's got a twin battery system. I'll just show you what. So it had a twin battery system here um, that it powers basically all the 12 volt um, things within the van. So your charging system, your lighting, um, but the thing that is most important, you don't think about that it charges, is the um, panels that actually, even though our fridge runs off gas, it's three three-way fridge, even though it runs off gas, um, it is actually needing some power into the van to run the monitor to know to run off gas. So when your batteries die, so does your fridge. And then, of course, your water pump um, needs to be working to access any of your water out of your taps. No batteries, no water. So it could have been an absolute disaster. It could have meant that we either had to try and go into one of the bigger towns and try and source a couple of batteries and get what we basically had to get and um, bad luck. Um, or it could have meant that that's the end of our holidays, come home and we have to regroup and figure out what we're going to do. Fortunately, as I said, we had the airbase. And so what that has meant is that it's been able to um, keep, we've just got it tucked in the boot at the moment. It's been able to keep the van running throughout the day um, quite nicely. It's charging, there's a little solar panel up on the um, caravan but when the um, sun isn't hitting that, we've also got it connected to a chaser. That is one of the DCV Group's um, flexi solar panels over there. It's a 400 watt panel. They're also going to be bringing those out. Super lightweight, at only 11 kilo. They are brilliant. And so we've been um, able to hook the solar panels into the DCV airbase, which has kept the airbase charged nicely all day long. The airbase is therefore then keeping the van charged all day long and then come the evening when the sun goes down, the airbase kicks in and it has been keeping everything going all night long and um, it's been perfect. So we're still able to utilise the airbase and the um, 240 volt things like um, that we've brought along uh, like our coffee machine and things like that, hair dryers, straighteners, all the rest of it. But it has meant in this particular case that our holiday wasn't ruined and it's sustaining our caravan for us um, through the day and into the evening as well and quickly recharging with these magnificent solar panels. So just so grateful that we've been able to have this and utilise it. 
So when we get back, we will um, replace our AGM batteries, but we can do that now at our leisure and source the batteries that we want to. We don't need to have anything to flash there because, of course, we're going to be having the air base that's running um, most of our um, needs. However, we do still want to replace those AGM batteries on the caravan just to keep those 12 volt situations going um, because we love the portability of the airbase as well. So that will mean that we can still go off um, throughout the day um, if we want to segment some of our camping, leave the caravan and go and tent camp, we can take the airbase with us and have our portable power. Um, but it also means that the caravan can stay where it is um, and just keep charging those things like the fridge and things like that while we're not around. So uh, that's the reason we will still replace those AGM batteries on the van, but thank goodness we've got the airbase.
So as you've seen, the Murray is a pretty special place to come and pull up camp for a little bit. We've been really, really um, so fortunate to see so many koalas surrounding us during their breeding season, the start of their breeding season. They breed from September through to February um, and they've been extremely active uh, for koalas and it's been fantastic. Um, there have been, today is the public holiday for Victoria for the AFL Grand Final for tomorrow. Our friends have already left to go and watch the Grand Final with their mates tomorrow. So we're going to enjoy a couple of days here just on our own. There have been a bit more activity on the river today, given that uh, a lot of people have the day off and a few more campers we've seen sort of scouting around for different places to pull up camp for the weekend so it has been a big advantage for us to be able to have come away that little bit earlier so i hope you've enjoyed this episode of our amazing getaway and we look forward to showing you where we end up on our next adventures thanks guys <music>